there's a cold absurdity to the fact that you can play op you can play extremely well and still lose. I mean, the actually this year you've played the uh, what what is it 50 days of World Series of Poker and it seems like at least from the perspective of me looking at it through the internet it seems like there's a lot of hands that you were like 70 30 80 20 uh, all in hands that you just did not you were not going your way that can sort of break you mentally absolutely yeah, one of the hardest things, especially about playing, because cash games and tournaments are different. One of the most difficult things about, you know, being a tournament player is resilience. Because more often than not, like, so if there's a tournament with a thousand people, to win the tournament, you have to get all of the chips. That means there's one winner and 999 losers. So it's, you know, it's very rare that you actually, like, win all the chips. So you're essentially, at some point, in every tournament you play, going to deal with, like, really bad luck and disappointment. And sometimes those streaks can have you question yourself. And be introspective about, okay, so I think I'm 47 now. I think I've gotten better as time went on between distinguishing, okay, am I losing right now because of bad luck or is it fundamentally decisions I'm making are not very good, right? And that's one of the hardest things for anyone who plays poker to to get to, right? Why am I losing? Am I losing because of my opponents being better? I'm not playing well, or am I losing just because of luck? And because there's so much variance in poker, a lot of players can be confused. Whip on both sides of the coin. One guy's winning and he thinks he's great. And he's really not. Wait till mm. the cards break even, as we say. You know. I think there's a lot of parallels to life as well. You don't. If you get screwed over over and over, it's hard to know if you're doing something wrong or if it's just bad luck. Yeah. I think they did a study. I remember there was like a study. It was supposed to be related to gambling, but it was mice, and they put them in a little maze, and they go down these three tubes, and they go down this one tube, and there'd be cheese, right? And then they go down again, cheese. Three times in a row, there was cheese there, right? The next time, there was an electric shock there, not cheese. The rat went, you know, he, the, the mouse went to, to, to get zapped. He got zapped, okay? Came back. He kept going back to get zapped until he died. Like, he kept going because he found cheese there. He has one there. So he continued to go <laughs> chase that win, despite it being, you know, now all of a sudden not worthwhile till, uh, till they died. And, and the, essentially what they said was, that is essentially how they uh, compared it to like, you know, the gambling brain and how mm -hmm. people think about gambling. You're chasing the wins. You learn too much. You sort of overgeneralize the lessons learned from the times you've won. So, yeah, like beginner's luck can be detrimental. If you, if you have some early luck and you believe that this is just the way it's supposed to be forever, you know, it can put you in a delusional state where, you know, you, you, you feel like I'm, I'm just great. But no, you're not. You were just lucky in the beginning. I actually played poker once in Vegas. It was a, a, it wasn't a tournament, but it was a kind of tournament-like style. I already forgot what it was, but what I do remember is I had four of a kind. So the last hand I've ever played in poker was I got a four of a kind and there was a, a couple of others with really strong hands. So everybody went all in. And I think you get some kind of bonus for getting four of a kind. Bad beat jackpot you were playing in. Yeah, so it's something like this. Uh, I apologize if I don't know the details, but I just remember winning a lot of money and I walked away from the table. I said, I'm not playing poker again. This is great. I'm gonna hit it up top. <laughs> Cause I started to feel like this is your, I started to think even though I haven't really played poker at all that I'm, I'm good. And that was a really dangerous feeling. And everybody was really mad for walking away from the table. One of the other things that I think is interesting about poker too is good is relative, right? Yeah. So you could be the seventh best player in the whole world, like literally seventh best player. But if you're playing with the other six, yeah. you're the sucker. <laughs> you are, you are the, like the worst player in the game, right? Yeah. So like there's a lot of players, for example, like the Dan Blazarians of the world, right? He's not a top level player, like, you know, these guys you see on TV, but he probably makes more money than they do. Because he plays with people that are far below his skill level. So you, part of the part of the skill of being a poker player is finding situations where you're profitable, you know, regardless of your skill level. Another uh, connection to life. Do uh, you think Dan Balzerian is telling the truth about having made, what is it, 50, $100 million? Just a huge amount of money playing poker. Considering what I know about the private games and the types of players who play in these private games and the stakes that they play, I absolutely believe... You know, Dan has made, I don't know how many millions, but I, you know, whether it's 50, whatever, but it wouldn't surprise me that if you play in these games within a year or you, you know, you find the right businessman who has way too much Bitcoin money 
you know, and you, you know, in one night you take him for 20 million. I absolutely could see it. I don't see any reason why, listen, where he got his money initially, you know, that's up yeah. to interpretation from his father or whatever, but what, but has he made a bunch of money playing poker? Absolutely. No question. Do, do you feel like as somebody who loves the game, do you think there's something almost ethically wrong in playing people much worse than you? So, yeah, that's a good question because, you know, part of the reason I played poker and wanted to become professional was like, I want to be, make my mother proud. Right. And I don't think she would be proud of me taking like grandma Betty's like last $5, you know, and again, down the street, you know, sending her broke and taking her pension check. So I play at the high stakes against people who can afford it. They know who I am. I'm not a hustler. I'm not pretending I'm bad at poker to squeeze in. Like I was thinking about this just yesterday because I played in a game that if I played that sort of role where a lot of guys do pros that sort of play down their skill level, pretend they're just one of the guys, these guys can make 20, 30 million dollars in a year. Legitimately. Like I believe that like if I did that, if I said, you know what, I'm gonna go down that path, get into these games in LA, you know, and travel and do all this kind of stuff, I can make 20 million a year. But it feels a little greasy. Right. I don't like to kiss anyone's ass. I don't like to ask it for any, anyone for a favor or things like that. So, but, but yeah, like I, I feel, listen, a rich guy who wants to sit down with a million bucks and get drunk and lose it. I have no empathy for that. I'm like, I don't have any moral qualms with that. So whatsoever. if uh, grandma Betty is a billionaire, uh, Take, give me, send it, send it. Right. You know, absolutely. Why not? <laughs>